Hey guys, MKBHD here, back with another review for DroidDog.com and the YouTube.com DroidDog channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at that Quadrant Benchmark application, and this is a quickie, but I know you guys have seen that Quadrant Benchmark tested on a lot of phones lately, and it's been something to, to really measure up to. So once, once a phone comes out, it's likely to be put through this Quadrant Benchmark, and a lot of people were wondering what the scores mean, where they come from, and how exactly this works. Once you get the app from the Android market, you'll see a panel of five different options. And we'll start at the bottom actually and work our way to the top. The bottom will just tell us a little bit about the application, the developer, etc. When you go second from the bottom, you can view all your system information, which will include your ROM if you're running a custom ROM, information about your processor and processor speed, so you can see that I'm overclocked and I have at 800 megahertz. You can keep going down and scroll and view a whole bunch of things about how many cores it has, the architecture, the memory, and things like that. But this is all viewable in the system information in case you're ever curious. Next up is Results Browser. And this is actually my favorite part and one of the most useful parts of getting to know this application and how the scores actually scale out over a wide variety of phones. So you can go ahead and pick a phone from one of three different manufacturers and actually take a look at its scale, which will be highlighted in yellow as you can see here on a chart compared to other phones. A lot of these have to do with the GPU and the CPU of the phone, what kind of processing power it has. So you can see that some of these, uh, these high-end phones like the Galaxy S here rank quite highly. There are some Motorola phones on the list like the Droid X, which also has a gigahertz processor and also ranks quite highly. And you can go ahead and compare your phone on this list, see if you can find your Android phone on this list and uh, see where it would supposed to be end up if it was stock. It's also worth noting that the HTC Nexus One has two spots on the list, one for Android 2.1 and the other for Android 2.2 Froyo, which as you can see provides massive performance increases over Android 2.1. So the last thing I'm actually going to show you guys about this application is the full Quadrant benchmark, and that's what I'm going to go ahead and run here as custom benchmarks are only available for an advanced version. So once you hit run full benchmark, you'll go ahead and see it begins to run a series of tests that will work really hard and stress your CPU, your phone's memory, and a couple of other things uh, in terms of the GPU where it can render things out. And you'll see a couple of images go across the screen here that'll really give you a good depiction of that. The first image you'll see is what appears to be some leaves rolling across the screen and being rendered out. At the bottom left hand corner on all of these images, you'll be able to see the frame count and actually the frames per second if my camera focuses. You can see this is actually taking us through a little 3D environment at around uh, what looks like about 15 frames per second on my overclocked droid. Again, I'm running a Cyanogen mod ROM, so you can see the things that are going through on the droid will look a little bit smoother than on the stock droid. Next is what looks like a, a couple of planets rotating and rendering around next to each other. And the last looks like a couple of three-dimensional DNA structures of different colors. And again, the frame rate seems to hover for me around 13 or 14 frames per second. At the end of the benchmark, you can go ahead and hit yes for it to send your benchmark result to a server so it can process your final score and it'll bring it back down to your phone and show you on that same familiar graph you saw when you're comparing other phones to each other. So you can see the Motorola Droid hovers close to, uh, when I'm overclocked anyway, close to the Samsung Galaxy S, but it's still below the Motorola Droid X, with a score of 986. You can look up top to get a better idea of all the scores that are possible, and of course the Nexus One running Android 2.2 is getting a crazy score of uh, over 1200 typically, uh, if you're running that sort of ROM. All the way at the bottom you can see the HTC Magic and the stock Motorola Droid, which are typically below 500, which are, I guess, a demonstration of the, in quotes, weaker smartphones out there. So I hope this video has overall given you a better idea of what exactly the Quadrant benchmark is. It tends to be one of the more popular benchmarks that you can run on your Android device, and you tend to see it run on the newer devices out there. So this has been MKBHD, thanks for watching this Droid Dog video, and I hope to catch you guys in next week's episode. Thank you for watching. Peace.